What's up, YouTube? It's your main man, ABD Hero, back again with another video. And we have the full game recap of the Charlotte Hornets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves coming up. Let's go. Yo, my dude, AB the Hero. What's up? Well, we getting it down in the ball of state, baby. Hey, hey. AB, way to get out of the lane. <laughs> How'd you get out of the lane? What do you thought about that, Jay? I like that. Yeah, I told you, he's a, he's a hustle for it. <laughs> Let's go! I'm out. All right, all right. So, pretty good game tonight. Uh, Hornets came out on top, 120 to 114. Uh, we've seen a, a solid game from Lamelo. Got into some foul trouble. Uh, um, what I suggest you do though is go watch on my channel. I posted the. Um, post-game uh, press conference with James Borrego where he talks about all of the players who had good games tonight and somehow leaves LaMelo completely out of the entire six-minute uh, press conference. It's it's very interesting to watch because it seems very strategic, right? It's a lot of praise for Devontae. It's a lot of praise for Miles, um, Gordon, Zeller. I'm talking le legitimately everybody, even Malik Monk. And... Uh, Bismack, uh, everybody, and the guy on the team who had gave you 20 and 11 tonight and three steals um, did not get mentioned from the head coach in that entire press conference. So I say go listen to that. Um, but like we always do, man, appreciate y'all for subbing to the channel, subscribing, hitting the notification bells, and all of that good stuff. Um, as you can see here, channel is growing almost at that 9,000 subs mark. Um, appreciate y'all for hitting that button and, and helping the boy get there. Let's get into the game. All right, so like I mentioned, 120 to 114. Um, as you can see in this first quarter up here at the top, um, you, you, you really have one of the only times in the last couple of games that this um, Hornets team were not able to crack the 30-point mark, right? Um, which is, they, they ended up pulling Melo... Uh, towards the end of the quarter, he kind of got back in, but what you seen was once they got him out of there, it, the offense kind of stalled and stagnated, right? As you'll see, we get to that play-by-play -play portion where we look at that critical minute in which a lot of the rotation begins to happen, and, and we'll see where things slow down a bit And uh, once we get there. So like I said earlier, 20 points, 11 boards, um, four assists, three steals. Early on in this game, you see Melo be very ag aggressive on the offensive end. I think he scored like 10 points in that first quarter and then really rebounding a lot. Um, assisting was not really part of the game plan for him early on in this game, but uh, they, they honestly needed those points to kind of keep them going. Um, as you look here, Terry Rozier with a 40 point night. And, and what's so crazy, is that they said that this is the second, this is the first time in Terry Terry Rozier's career where he's had two 30-point nights. And it's so funny to me, because I was thinking about this as I watched this game, it's, it's so different watching a team like the Charlotte Hornets play on a night-in, night-out basis, who is like, like a perennial non-playoff non team, right? So which means is that they're all NBA players. They can play really good basketball, but they're not like super elite year in and year out. So for me, I think about, I, I, I'm a LeBron guy. I watched LeBron, uh, Cleveland, um, Miami, Cleveland, LA, right? Not so much now. I feel like once he went to LA, it's just kind of like, all right, bro, you, you know, you spent most of your career kind of with the underdog and kind of doing, never mind. But so what I realized is watching that, you see this consistent level of greatness, right? And watching this team, you see where like the, the fringe team has these nights on, nights off, right? Where you don't really get those guys who every night you're going to get 30, 40 points from them. You get Gordon Hayward, you get a four, 14 points tonight, and then a, two nights from now he'll give you 40. You know what I mean? Terry Rozier, 
for the first time in the history of his career, goes 30 points back to back, right? And you look at these games where you see guys like Kyle Anderson from the other night, who then looks like a, a superstar versus this team, and then goes back and then probably does nothing, right? You see the, the kind of Malik Monk, who one night dropped 30, 40, almost, uh, almost 40 points or something stupid like that, and then now is giving you five points. And, and has not had that success. So it's just crazy to, to watch a team like this and see how talented folks can be, but also how inconsistent folks can be with those minutes. Um, so to get into the game here, you look at your boy LaMelo, um, like I said, 20 points, 11 boards, 25% from behind the arc, 53% from um, the field. And here's the thing that I, I like, I always say this, I appreciate this about Melo's game in comparison to like Lonzo's game. When you go here, you check out the ball score, you see your boy Melo is um, eight for 15, right? Two for eight. And he attempts to drive to the basket. I have this pulled up here, the ball score from the Pelicans game here. And you have Lonzo here is four for 12 from the field four for 10 from behind the arc, right? Where the majority of his shots, even on nights where we quote unquote would call him aggressive, all of his shots come from behind the arc. Rarely ever gets to the free throw line. The only two field goal attempts, not with only two field goal attempts, not three pointers, right? So you end up with 12 points, that's great, but like you, it's just lacking something as, as far as the offense. Like I mentioned in my halftime show, one of the things that you see when you watch this Hornets team is that even when LaMelo is not scoring, the pace in which he pushes and attacks is, is what really sets this team over the edge. Now, I do hear a lot of conversation when it comes to Lonzo about folks saying like, yo, un unlock the keys, let him run, give it, make it be his team. And we don't see that a lot from them. But um, uh, I, I think that that needs to happen. Oh, and I'm sorry, I, I, wanted, I meant to bring this up earlier. I, I seen this over on Twitter um, where Slam Online says, we need a nickname for this these two guys right here, right? And then Airbnb says i don't know airbnb would be pretty cool so to me that's insane right because i think like the reason why the airbnb nickname i think it's a dope nickname for those two right but uh obviously you get the branding issues and the copyrights and the trademarking and all of that right you want to have a nickname that you could throw on a shirt right it's the same as like shaq calling himself superman yeah, you can get a Superman tattoo, but you can't actually have a Shaq Superman shirt without licenses and all of this other stuff. And Airbnb as a brand is just not as cool as Superman anyway. So I don't know why you would want to license that type of uh, logo and all of that information. So I, I think that they probably need to come up with something else, but it would be cool to see them do some like Airbnb commercials or whatever and get that bag. All right, so... Um, here we look at the shot chart, your boy LaMelo Ball, like I said, inside, outside, taking a healthy amount of shots from all over the court, and I like that about his game. Your boy Terry Rozier, though, you look at this, <sighs> dynamic night, man, scary Terry. Your boy Terry looks scary tonight for sure. Um, Anthony Edwards, if we go over here and really look at what he had going tonight, um, he impressed me. He really did impress me a lot. Um, I like his game. Very athletic, smooth, driving to the basket. His like little rock, the cradle little crossover situation that he got going. To me, the boy is going to be nice, right? I feel like the the NBA is in good hands with this next generation if guys like him and LaMelo can develop and then kind of continue to go head to head with each other like uh, moving forward. Um, to the game, you see Hornets with an eight point, uh, the biggest leader tonight for the Hornets was eight points. Pretty much um, led this game, right? It was all it was in their hands for the most part. So, so it was kind of funny when, like I said, you listen to uh, the the coach and him talk about, you know, I feel like he can be overly critical, right? You go back to that last game where we see him pull LaMelo in the fourth quarter in the game that they were losing. That potentially probably had a chance to, to come in and close it up and didn't do it. And it's like it was based on play. You look at tonight where he continues to give everybody praise for how great they're playing, but 
um, not LaMelo, right? And it seems like a very intentional kind of shade or a shot or something. And I seen somebody in the comments on, on um, that video that I was talking about that I posted saying like it was, it's probably him like playing the mental game and trying to inspire him. And what he gonna do is he don't wanna get him too high and you don't wanna build him up so much. You just wanna kind of tear him down and tear him down and make him want it and want it and want it more. And to me, that's a very scary game to play with somebody, right? Especially when you know that you can't do that with all these other guys, right? So what's the difference between like playing these mental tough games with folks, right? Um, who you feel like need to be built up in that way, but it's also makes it difficult when folks watch you be overly praising other folks, right? Who don't even have half the amount of game as you do and you act like they just are God's gift of basketball. And then when you talk to the guys who are really, really doing this thing, you kind of give them a bit of shade. You get here and um, at halftime, when it comes down to points in the paint, um, Minnesota was trailing actually Charlotte. Uh, Minnesota began to kind of get back in their bag. Like I said, um, I thought that Carl Anthony Towns was going to be the person that was kind of hard for um, the, the, the Hornets to deal with. And at moments he had his, his time, but you can tell that he was still trying to get his feet back underneath of him um, after missing, you know, what, 13 games uh, due to COVID and safety protocols and all of that stuff. Second chance points, the Hornets still down dominated that area fast break points Hornets uh, won that as well overall good game for these guys um we go here let me see I, I think I got the stats pulled up so you got the Anthony Edwards um LaMelo Ball matchup here and, and this is a cool thing that they do over here on the whatever the NBA situation where right? you get the actual head-to-head -head uh kind of matchup here so they play one game together and it shows you uh um, LaMelo was on the court with Anthony Edwards, 29 minutes, 18 points uh, while Anthony was in the game, 50% from the field, 20, you know what I mean? So they, they pretty much played a lot of the same minutes. Um, I think in order to get the other side, you got to swap it here. So let it load up a second. And then, so you see, yep, 29 minutes, uh, 19 two points where Lamelo was off the court. So you see, I think that the coaches and a lot of folks, um, you know what I mean, that front office realized that that was a matchup that folks wanted to see. Even though they wasn't going to head to head, just to have them on the court um, together was a box office situation. So overall, a good game. Um, I know that we've been doing this halftime show, man, but I, it's just too short, man. So let me know if you all are interested in kind of trying to continue that. Every time I get up here to try to get it going, like some a computer freak out or whatever, and then I can't ever get it as quick as I, I like want to have it going. But um, let me know if you all want me to continue that or try it some more to see if we can get it going. I might have to stop it though because what I've realized is that it um doing that video that has such a small window of value like affects the viewership of the entire channel right so if only 500 of y'all get to that video to see it um then it's like eh, oh we ain't finna show this video. look at that last one it was only but not realizing that it was only because it was you only had 10 minutes to watch it before it kind of became irrelevant so we'll see um it depends on what you all say though but it's your main man abd hero we finna get out of here peace no, not peace, plus one, triple B's, we out.